Hello, and welcome to this film, which is all about Gibbs Free Energy, and it's the last of the films from the higher level energetics topic. So well done to you if you've made it this far and you've watched all the other films. If you haven't watched the one about entropy in particular, then make sure you do watch it before this one, because this one won't make a huge amount of sense otherwise. And really, you probably need to know about entropies as well. But anyway, hopefully by the end of this film, you'll be able to look at the value of the Gibbs free energy change and see and see immediately whether that signifies a spontaneous process or not. And what you'll also hopefully be able to do is um, basically calculate a Gibbs free energy change using a temperature that a process is occurring at and the enthalpy and entropy changes for that process. Okay, so first of all, if we look at what a spontaneous reaction is, and we cast our minds back a long, long way to what we were first learning about enthalpy changes in chemical reactions, you might remember us saying that in an exothermic change, the reactants are less stable than the products, and in an endothermic change, the reactants are more stable than the products. Now, if enthalpy was all that spontaneity had to do with, then we'd expect that most exothermic changes would happen spontaneously, I suppose depending on how big this activation energy barrier was, and most endothermic changes would never happen at all, because why would things become less stable? Well, the fact is, and as you might have guessed, this might have something to do with entropy, there's more to it than just enthalpy alone, and temperature comes into it, as does entropy. So, when we're deciding whether a reaction will be spontaneous or not, we do need to be able to use a formula, and here it is, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So the Gibbs free energy change is equal to the enthalpy change minus the product of the entropy change and the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, this equation is on the data sheet, so don't worry about remembering it. But what we do need to be able to remember is that only if delta G is negative will a change occur spontaneously. Okay, so now if we look at these energy level diagrams and we ask ourselves, well, what sort of enthalpy changes and entropy changes do we need in order for delta G to be negative? Okay, well, for an exothermic change, delta H is a negative number. Okay, if the entropy change is positive, then it doesn't matter what the temperature is, subtracting this positive number from a negative number is always going to give you a negative value. Okay, So reactions will always be spontaneous if the enthalpy change is negative and the entropy change is positive. However, if the entropy change is negative and the temperature is high enough, then sometimes the, this value here will have a bigger numerical value than this one. And therefore, you'll be adding a number that's bigger than this negative number, and you'll end up with a positive delta G. So if delta H is negative, but delta S is also negative, and the temperature's high enough, then the reaction might not be spontaneous. In this case here, if you've got a positive enthalpy change, then you're going to need delta S to be positive, because you're going to have to subtract a big enough number here from this positive number to make this number um, less than zero or negative. Okay, So in other words, if you've got a positive enthalpy change, the only way you're going to be spontaneous is if your entropy change is also positive and if your temperature changes and if your temperature is high enough. Okay, so bearing that in mind, let's just do a quick example so that we can see again in my opinion, how simple these questions really are in the exam, although the, 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 a, a deep understanding of these topics is a very difficult thing. Um, the kind of understanding that you need in order to, uh, to answer exam questions is, is quite superficial. Let's have a go at one of these questions, okay? So given the following information, determine whether the dissolution, so the dissolving, of ammonium nitrate is spontaneous at 25 degrees centigrade and find the minimum temperature at which it's spontaneous. Okay, um, now then, in order to do this, we're going to need to know the enthalpy change and the entropy change. And remember that the enthalpy change is found by subtracting the sum of the enthalpies of formation of the reactants from 
the enthalpies of formation of the products. Okay, and I find that the standard enthalpy change here is equal to 28 kilojoules per mole. Now you might remember me saying in the last film that we've really got to watch out with entropies and their different units. Okay, because here we're going to have an entropy change that is in joules per mole, not kilojoules per mole. So it might be just wise to change this into 28,000 joules per mole. Okay, now let's find the entropy change. And again, that is the entropies of the products minus the entropies of the reactants. And if I do that, I get an entropy change of 108 joules per mole. Now, does that seem reasonable, a positive entropy change? Well, a solid has dissolved, so it has become more disordered, so that seems sensible. Okay, now I multiply that by the temperature, which is not 25, but times 298 Kelvin, and then I subtract this product here from my enthalpy change, and I find that the Gibbs free energy change is now minus 4184 joules per mole. So yes, this is a negative value, it's less than zero, okay, and therefore this change will happen spontaneously, and that's exactly what happens when you smack an ice pack and you release the solid ammonium nitrate into the water, this change happens spontaneously, this endothermic change happens, and the ice pack gets quite cold. Okay, the minimum temperature at which it's spontaneous is the temperature that we have here that will give us a positive value for delta G. So in other words, we want to find the value at which, del uh, the value of T at which delta G becomes zero. So really what we want to do here is to say zero equals delta H, which we decided, sorry, was 28,000, minus T delta S, so this is the T that we're trying to find, and times um, 108, Okay, and then we can say, right, well, in that case, um, minus, uh, sorry, T times 108 is equal to 28,000, and um, therefore T equals 28,000 over 108. So the temperature at which delta G will become zero is um, this one here, 28 over 28,000 over 108. And any temperature higher than that, remember, any temperature higher than, let me just quickly calculate that, I didn't do it before, 28,000 divided by 108, and that's 259 Kelvin, or rather, two, yeah, 259 Kelvin. So any temperature higher than that, and it will be spontaneous. Any temperature lower than that, and this entropy change, this product here, will not be big enough to turn delta G into a negative number. Okay, sorry about the slightly slow finish there. There was a calculation that I was trying to avoid doing because I hadn't done it beforehand. Um, and I just thought I'd leave you with a, a, a way to solve it rather than the solution, but then change my mind at the last minute. But anyway, hopefully uh, you now know what the Gibbs free energy change has got to do with a reaction spontaneity, and you can calculate a Gibbs free energy change by using an enthalpy change and a temperature as well as an entropy change. Uh, as usual, even though we're at the end of a topic, um, if you've got any questions or any comments, please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.